Here is the case study of the fixed foam fire extinguishing system failure. Before proceeding to the case study, let's understand the basic high expansion foam system working for the engine room firefighting. Here is the simplified circuit and the main component of the foam system being the foam liquid tank which is essentially located outside the engine room and the foam is being sucked by the foam liquid pump over here and through the pressure control of the diaphragm valve it is ejected by the sea water through the fire main which is supplied by the emergency fire pump which is again located outside the engine room so the sea water and the foam fluid mixture is supplied to various foam generator nozzles all over the engine room and also in the pump room if it's an oil tanker now let's understand the foam generator working there are various nozzles on a foam generator which supplies the foam fluid and seawater mixture at high velocity and this high velocity entraps the surrounding air thus producing high expansion foam here is another view of it the high velocity foam and seawater fluid mixture which is sucking air and then becoming high expansion foam so let's start with the case study here are the principal particulars of the ship it's a pure car carrier the ship was en route in mid-ocean and the time of accident was 2300 hours and the accident was failure of fixed firefighting foam system casualty fortunately none what exactly happened at 2300 hours when fourth engineer and duty oiler was on watch the fire broke out from the fuel pump area when they rushed to the spot they saw high pressure fine jet of oil from the mechanical seal of the pump impinging on the oil heater and thus caught fire the fire sensor automatically activated the fire alarm and the fourth engineer and the duty oiler raised the general emergency alarm and started to fight the fire with portable fire extinguishers but it seemed that the fire was not un getting under control so they proceeded immediately to the muster station after the head count and muster the duties were delegated and the firefighting team with SEBA and charged hose entered the engine room after 15 minutes it was found the fire was spreading more and more and it was not possible to contain the fire so the team came out and then the decision was made by the master and chief engineer to flood the engine room with high expansion foam system so the ventilation fans the fan and funnel flaps have been shut the quick closing walls operated and everything ready to operate the fixed high expansion foam system when they operated the foam system the engineers found that the system pressure was little bit higher than the normal this is the most important parameter which everybody has to note however the entire concentration was on extinguishing the fire and they didn't pay attention to this part so after the entire system was foam system was complete a decision was made to re-enter the engine room and assess the situation the firefighting party entered the engine room with charged hose and SCBA and found that the fire was still alive they came out and they informed the master and it was decided to go and fight the fire with charged hose and SCBA on it nearly took three hours and six teams to completely extinguish the fire approximately at five o'clock in the morning the fire was brought completely under control after five hours of continuous fighting so here is the picture of the fuel pumps the transfer pump areas it's completely burnt and on the generator fuel pump area the fire sensors completely melted as you can see in the picture investigation the DG fuel oil supply pump anti splashing covers was not in place it seems that the crew has carried out the maintenance of replacing the mechanical seal 
and they forgot to put back the covers on top. This led to a fine jet of oil from the mechanical seal directly hit the heaters. Now, even though there was a fire, why the high expansion foam system did not put the fire off? It seems that in the last dry dock, the foam line was hydraulically pressure tested. And after pressure testing, the medium, which is usually water which was used, was not completely drained and it was trapped in some portion of the piping, which causes corrosion and thus all these rust and corroded particles clogged the nozzles, thus allowing not enough foam seawater mixture for firefighting. So here are the pictures of choked nozzles, which means no foam on seawater mixture was coming out of this. It was completely choked. And these are the debris which are removed from the pipeline. Here is the picture of the choked pipe due to ineffective draining of the fluid which was used for pressure testing. And here is the foam distribution manifold, which means any liquid which is used for pressure testing will definitely be entrapped if you are not going to blow out or drain the line. What you see is a picture of the foam solution distribution manifold and during dry dock they have carried out the pressure testing which means if they are not drained the line the water or other medium is going to get clogged or deposited over here which means it is going to corrode the internals of the pipeline. The root cause. After completing the periodic maintenance, the crew forgot to replace the anti-splashing cover, which is the trouble, which is the start of the fire. And next is, after the hydraulic pressure test of the fixed foam extinguishing line, it was not drained. The nozzles were not checked after the pressure test of the line. So the lessons learnt, it's a costly lesson. After any maintenance, ensure that the area is clean and you put all guards and anti-splash tapes or covers in place. After the hydraulic pressure test, ensure you blow the line completely or purge it or drain or make some sufficient draining arrangement for the entrapped pockets. Definitely after carrying pressure test, you got to blow the line and ensure that the nozzle is not clogged after the pressure test or regularly foam nozzles should be blown through. So that's the lesson learned from this. Let's remember learning from mistakes. Let's not do it again.